my ego has done more damage than good. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> and the thing is, is that even with her, um, welcome back to another episode of the Social Talks podcast. It's your boy Social Talks. Boy Matt. It's your boy Carl. And uh, before we start this video, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to give us five stars on Amazon, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Don't forget to check us out on Patreon. But uh, before we start anything, wow, dead ass. I'm not even kidding. Someone asked, what's Matthew's body count? That is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> you don't have that. <laughs> what's the worst thing a girl can do during a blowjob? The huh? worst yeah. thing? Yeah. Suck my balls too hard, bro. And it fucking makes me want to punch you in the face. I was kind of like surfing and scrolling on the internet lately. And I got, I went down like this kind of sad tunnel in a way. Okay. You guys ever have like these, these, these moments where you're like sometimes you binge watch like just like sad videos yeah. kind of. Oh yeah. You know, and it's always the ones that get me that revolve around... Um, like we revol- revolve around what can I speak properly Take that always revolve around men's mental health and that mm. is true yeah so but I'm so I'm, I'm gonna show you guys a couple of videos and then I'm gonna show you guys a, a social uh, a social experiment video afterwards oh my lord I love you so much I would not she has been I'll break down crying right now She has been the safest place for me to become the man that I never thought I could be. And one of the greatest gifts God has ever given me. Abby, thank you for not running away from this kid. Thank you. This man is in love. That is that is so nice to see. Having such a supportive girl also. And it's super rare also. She has a nice Damn. one. I'm going to sound really, really, really pick me right now. But if I'm being really honest, if my relationship were to end one day, I am thoroughly convinced that it would be my fault. Damn. Because... It's very rare, and I feel like this guy resonated in the same way. It's very rare to find someone who's just purely good. Mm. No no bad intentions, not a bad bone in their body. Doesn't, you know, can't lie, not because they don't want to, but they physically are not able to do so. That really cares for you and loves the small little things. And when you take all the things that are good in a person, you put them into one person to be in love with, that's the kind of emotion that you get from it. That's the mm-hmm. kind of feeling you get. That's the kind of gratitude that you have because it's so rare in the world that we live in to find such pure goodness into someone with all the cancel and hate and racism that we have in the world to find a moment in time where you could be just safe with someone is like something that you can't even pay for. Thanks. Like the celebrities with all the money they have, they're going from girl to girl, wife to wife, not being able to find someone that could bring them just that. And I feel like us as men, one of the f- things that we want from a girl is that safe space. Mm. Is that feeling like there's a difference between you coming home and the girl saying what's up from the sofa versus her coming up to you and giving you a hug. Yeah. Like that is enough to make your day the best day ever. Yeah, that's true. Like home at home. You know what I mean? Well, that's the thing. The girl, she becomes your home. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Whether you guys are in the slums or when you guys are in, you know, a fucking penthouse in New York, like she makes it a home regardless. Mm -hmm. No matter where it is. Damn. That is pure love. Yeah. Shit. 
I wonder. It's coming, bro. It's it, it's coming, and <sighs> the word epiphany is coming again. But I've I've definitely come to an epiphany that if things, you guys know, I'm very cutthroat when it comes to breakups. If something were to happen between me and my girlfriend, she is someone that I would want to keep around for the rest of my life. And I haven't said that about anybody ever, mm. yeah. ever, ever, ever. Only because there's so few people out there like her that to not have her, let alone as my wife, would be one thing. But not to have her as a whole in my life, now that's not something I would be able to live with. So that's kind of like the... That's kind of like the same emotion that you can kind of sense from this guy, you know. That I can sense from you. Also, I mean, you look in the same headspace as him in a way that like she's your safe spot. Yeah. Explain, explain what what's like safe spot to you for like for like women's watching out there, and it's like, have I ever been like a safe place for a man? Well, maybe a lot of guys might resonate with this, but for me, I feel like I've always. If this is the episode that I start tearing up, bro, I'm going to lose my mind. If, if I think because of, of someone like me, I'm always, I'm always running away from things. I'm running from responsibilities. I'm running from um, certain commitments. And not all aspects, but some. You know, I'm, I'm someone who's running away or delaying things and stuff like that. I feel that's someone that makes it feel like I don't need to run anymore. That's what home feels like. Okay. So... Being able to to talk to someone about to, being able to talk to someone about what I got going on and having her there for me, like genuinely there for me, not just physically there, but hearing me out and giving me the space and time that I need to figure out my shit, but also being able to be a part of that in helping me, that's what home feels like. Mm. It feels like I'm talking to the part of me that I'm lacking. Mm-hmm. It just com- she just like completes you in a way. Yeah, basically. like amongst boys, it's one thing. Yeah, but to come from someone that's beyond friends and friendship, uh, sorry, be- so going beyond someone that's from family or friendship, from someone that you love and that's like your partner, is a completely different ball game. Yeah, there's so much as us to us friends as uh, brothers we could do to make you feel good compared to like what a girl could actually get make you feel you know what I'm yeah but it's also because like you guys as friends like you guys have your own shit going on you have your own dating life your career this and that and a third and so do i but when it's me and my girl we kind of have that going on together mm. so we have no choice but to be a big part of each other's lives in order to make sure that we're moving in the right direction yeah mm-hmm. do you know what i mean 100%. would you would you say in your life that you had like that one girl that made you feel like home and it's not like if you say no, it's not no disrespect. It could be just because you're too young. Uh, I think I, I think I did when I was way younger, when I was like 17, 18. Mm-hmm. Around, so I thought that was the only time I <clears throat> actually was in love, basically. Um, I think today I just realize more and more. I'm just wondering if I if I ever like, be like going to be like that or fall in love again with a girl because. Uh, Especially nowadays, it's so hard to, like we say all the time, to find someone so genuine and like actually loves me for who I am, let's say. And I'm, it's just like, I think I'm not helping my case when I go on TikTok and I see like my For You page showing me a bunch of girls like cheating, doing this, this and that. And I see this, I'm like, you know what? I don't want a girlfriend. I close myself a lot because I, I even post on my Instagram, I'm single, I'm not looking for anything. Mm. Like if it happens, yeah, for sure, I'll say yes, but... Uh, I think it's just like I know myself and I know I'm always like even though a good girl is talking to me or I know she's a good girl she could be like a potential like wife I know I'll I, I, I like like put her aside or like push her just because uh I'm scared in a way you know hmm. so I I hope I'll be able to feel that love but uh I don't know I guess I'll I'll just have to 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 be ready to accept it, basically. When it happens. Yeah, to be in the mindset to... Yeah, to mindset there. to be like, you know what? I'm I'm ready to accept someone, a girl loving me for who I am and me loving her for who she is also and just like be a team and just go through everything together, you know? I, I feel like for you would be someone that truly actually understands you. Mm. Like like me, me as a friend, it took me some time to actually understand you. And as we just said, like 
there's no like your girlfriend would do even more yeah. than me me there's a certain like boundaries that i can't go sergio can go like it's just we're friends right but it, even to me it took me some time to actually like understand you and i think that as soon as i understand you the sergio understand you meet you whoever this is how you got closer to like to us as friends if we would have never understand you to this point i think would just be like like uh what's what's the connaissance yeah uh, what's the name acquaintances, acquaintances yeah. type of thing pretty much so i think for you would be like a girl that understand you really yeah actually yeah like deep down what's actually going on basically understands you like the the real you like there there's you there's call surface law surface and then there's there's call call mm-hmm. actually and i never show car call really mm-hmm. that's true not yet yeah there'll be a there'll be a time for sure and the thing too is that the time when it does happen you won't even have asked for it yeah it'll just happen Like I think naturally you would just be car car, like yeah. you would just know with that person. Like you wouldn't have to. Yeah. Whatever. Bro, I can't. I can't get away with anything. I can't get away with anything, no matter what I say or if I try to manipulate. Not her. If I try to manipulate like a situation, or if I'm trying to explain something, but there's actually like a dark, a, a deeper meaning behind it. She knows. Yeah, she mm. catches on. She's like, hmm. it, nothing goes over her, bro. And it's not even something that I've told her, I admitted about. Some people just, they know, they learn, and they are super understanding of themselves, mm. first and foremost, but also of other people. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it, it, it makes for a tougher relationship for sure mm. because it forces you to have to be, I guess, honest Yeah. When it's a lot easier to be dishonest mm-hmm. in situations of altercations or like to avoid a fight, but in a relationship like that, you have no choice but to be the most truest, That's honest right. version of yourself in order for it to be a prosperous relationship. Yeah, because it's easy to lie. It's easy to lie. It's easy to, to do all that stuff. But when you have someone that actually catches on and understands you for who you are, it's it doesn't pass. Say, yeah. What about you? If we're ever had that uh definitely yeah like a, a home yeah yeah most definitely i had that person that actually knew me for for me and that's why i use those words for you it's pretty much the same thing as like no me actually yeah most definitely it's a different type of vibe mm. uh dynamic is completely different i i like know right away what a dynamic would let, let's say if I'm i'm dating with someone as soon as i'm starting dating i know that person is never going to get to that point she's never going to understand me we're never going to pass this little like barrier or whatever it is uh not because i don't want to it's just because i it's like you said like i can't get away with anything that person would just know mm. whatever bullshit i had to say it would just know so yeah i definitely had that that person that it felt like home you guys you guys believe in soulmates Yeah, I do, but I I believe in multiple soulmates though. I don't believe in like one soulmate. One soulmate. Yeah. I don't think that's a thing. I think it's more like some people have this like specific like type of connection or energy or like whatever that when you meet them, like it's a soulmate for you. Mm. But like it doesn't mean that like an, another place in the world or another country, or whatever, that same energy or person could be It's there. Not, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because, like, if you really think about it, like, you could meet your soulmate as much as you can meet it, like, in Montreal or, like, whatever city that you're in. But if you move into Dubai or you move into China or whatever, you can meet someone there. That's exactly what you're looking for, I'd say. Yeah. Because there's so many, there's so much people. There's so many people. But you attract also, like, you, I don't know if you guys believe in manifesting and, like, energies and whatever, but, like, you attract what you want in a way. So if you want a girl that is in a... Like whatever, if you just want to, uh, I don't want to use bad words. That's why, just just not the type of girl that you actually want. Like let's say you're, it's just girls that it's just to pass time. <sighs> yeah, whatever. Like um, no, I can't. There's no words that I can use hook that up. I'm not. Huh? Just to hook up with. Yeah, those type of girls, you can like if you're in a mindset of like a hookup culture type of thing, you will attract mostly just that. But if you're more and a mindset of looking but not looking it's a good word but mm. open-minded to something else than just like having sex with a bunch of girls because like. think about it when you're in a mindset of like a hookup culture like you're not really interested you can meet that girl that could be perfect for you but you're so not in, the, in that mindset that 
anything she'll do or anything whatever you'll just right away be like like you're, you're gonna put barriers because yeah. you don't want to you don't want to let your own mind get through this so obviously it goes both ways there's like we just said there's this girl that's gonna have this like specific energy that's gonna like i'll say change you but also you need to be like probably open-minded to the idea but it's not it's not like it's a timing thing it just happens right mm -hmm. it's like time comes have you been able to since regain that moment of having a person that feels like home you miss it yeah for sure it's different it's not like well i don't know for you it's been longer for you but for me definitely i would love to have this like home feeling again it's mm -hmm. completely different seeing that person over and over and never like you're never get tired of there's no you're always happy pretty much type mm. of thing but all, when you're single it's like yeah you're you're happy that you're single because you don't owe anything to anyone where you can do pretty much whatever you want but at the same time it's constant what's your favorite color what do you do in life what do you what do you do it's like constant, constant just like uh talk a small talk small talk mm. no keyword small talk because i like the process of falling in love or like getting to know someone i love yeah. it i love this process but a small talk surface level bullshit i hate it so much what'd you but, eat today rice like would you yeah like ask me the deep ass like mm. question and like honestly like i i just got like a situation that happened like lately and i i wanted to talk to this girl and i wanted to we always spoke like very surface always and that one time I'm like yo listen we actually never spoke like that so let's get in like deep conversation i did i just started like asking more deep conversation right away it's like it's like it didn't work like at mm -hmm. all like mm -hmm. wanted to stay surface not my vibe she was like being like very awkward with the, the the questions or whatever she likes like sense like it was a you know double meaning question like i was asking a question and she's like oh but what, what do you, you mean, mean by, by that this? like or thinking weird or like whatever and i was like literally it's just trying to get deep. to know you for you what's your thought on this situation what's your thought or whatever so um yeah mm. you feel like you're wasting your time also when this shit like that happens Waste you're talking to someone and you're like you know it's not going anywhere you're like you're like bruh what am i doing hmm. and you're just stuck there hmm. so that's why when you you talk to someone that feels home it's you don't even have to mention ha having deep talks you guys are literally just talking and it's it's you guys are the deep talks are are beyond the world of deeper than deeper and you didn't even realize it you didn't have to like sit there and be like can we have like a more serious conversation? No, not even. It just went there literally naturally. No question asked. You don't have a headache. It's just, you don't even have to also think about your questions. You don't have to think about anything. You guys have like just a dialogue and talking, right? If, if you got to ask also to have a deep talk or whatsoever, it feels like it's also forced in a way. Hmm. Yeah, like think you're about forcing, question, you're yeah. try, trying to make it work so much. It's like, okay, you know what? Can we like have a deep conversation? And you're like, like you said it should happen just naturally no need to force something but i think it's that it's that home feeling that is a big big um motivator for a lot of guys like yeah. don't get me wrong i want to get my money up right i want i want to be successful in all these things but none of these things come without me thinking of wanting to experience this with someone mm-hmm so like a lot of the things I'm striving for is for my own personal wealth and, and my own personal aspiration goals and dreams, but I don't want them. I don't see myself achieving these things without having someone by my side. Okay. Do you get what I'm saying? Well, yeah, totally. On Cause there's no purpose. Like what's the purpose of being that rich or being that this and that mm -hmm. while you don't have someone to share with or, yeah. or your kids also like you'll have a partner to have kids to share your family, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, so like I do have a vision of the kind of lifestyle that I see and envision for myself, but subconsciously it's to live and experience that with someone. Yeah, the process of getting where you want to be with someone that's actually there for you in your ups and downs and like all through, all the way long, all the way there, it's uh, it got to be insane. All the ups, all the downs, you just fill them with this one person. It's like, it's like, oh shit, you're actually my person you know well i actually found a video that speaks exactly about that in this world we're only conquering this world so beautiful as much as we men so beautiful 
Oh my lord. As much as we men think that we're conquering this world, we're only conquering this world to give the world to a woman. No, honestly, it's true. that's why I, I feel like I try to work so hard because I know I'm going to have like a family one day. And although I don't have no idea who they are, what I do today is what's going to set that up for them to live a life that I would want them to live. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you want to give them the life that you wish you had when it came to a home. <sighs> yeah. A lot. Like, rewatch it like a thousand times. Because mm -hmm. it's true. Yeah, everything I have now, I want my kids to have later. I want them to, to. I want it to be like easier in a way, and just them to be happy, you know. But for you to have kids, you need your partner. You yeah. get what I mean. So, like at the end of the day, everything that you do, yeah, you do it for for you, but to give to your family, because mm. there's no purpose. What like, there's no purpose to be that like that wealthy, that this and that. If you have not no one to share, no family, mm. no nothing. Like, friends friends would be for a good time. Like, you just go, what, you guys going to afford, yeah, like, yacht and drink all the time? And there's no purpose to it. You're going to do that every single weekend. Mm. Well, when you're 53, there's no, I would most, much rather being able to afford my, my daughter's nice, good school that she wants to go. Or like, she wants to go away for sports, whatever it is. And I'm, I'm super capable of like affording that third because so she's happy this mm. is much more purpose than whatever just you know what I mean? whatever. yeah well party has no meaning yeah i feel like that's the i think that's one of the things too you know i think us as guys like we're often in competition with other men yeah you know the, the minute that the gr a girl's available it's like you know, Losers. there's there's ten guys in her DMs, right? So we're in competition with each other as to who's gonna get that chance, you know. Um, and because of that competitive competitiveness amongst men, I think it's harder for them to um, kind of be like nice or friendly to one another, yeah. Um, yeah. Be like between guys. And I came across this social experiment. I wanted to show you guys the video, and it was actually pretty interesting. It was kind of an eye-opener and I wanted to see what you guys thought. I was like, okay, this is awkward. I felt kind of uncomfortable. I felt strange, afraid this is not normal. <laughs> There's something wrong here. <laughs> You're being weird. No. No. It's, it's normal, like, oh, I like your shoes, your shorts, or even your t-shirt. I really like your shoes. Thank you. Very nice glasses you have. Thank you. <laughs> That's amazing socks. <laughs> Thank you much. Like. But I don't remember anybody saying like, oh, nice skin. Skin? Yeah, it's really, really <laughs> smooth. You have beautiful skin. <laughs> Thank you. Why are you saying that? It's really smooth. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I have to tell you, you have incredible skin. Yes. <laughs> wait, wait, okay, but that's your thing. I mean, this is my line, that's your line. I already told you. Okay, okay, okay. Just, no, I'm here. I'll just that's give you a compliment. Don't worry. That's enough. What are you doing here? Are you working out or something? Yeah? yeah. Cool. Just keep on doing that then. I think it's not yet culturally acceptable. We just have to break that mold of of a masculinity. There's nothing wrong in, in complimenting someone's skin. If you want to give a compliment and you feel like it, do it. Don't be awkward, please. <laughs> Don't be awkward. Are you a dermatologist? So I thought that was interesting how the guys were on the on the defense mode right away as soon as they got a compliment for their skin. Yeah. yeah. But for anything else, like shoes and stuff like that, it was cool. Anything materialistic is nice, but as soon as it comes to you, actually, it's like, oh, well. Yeah, or like skin or something that would be deemed as um, something that's more catered to, like, women taking care of their skins, for example, yeah. right? Um, but, like, even in our friend group, Matt has a skincare routine. I think Mitra has a skincare routine, too. Mm -hmm. um, and it's nothing but utter the fact of just taking care of yourself yeah, it's the right. same routine that you take to to cut your hair to brush your teeth to maintain anything that you want to maintain you take care of your skin right yeah. i mean I, I don't see why anybody would not want to just look youthful for mm -hmm. as long as possible we have one life to live why not just look the best 
Forever. for the time that we're yeah, here. Yeah. You know? Damn, I actually wish I had a skincare routine to fuck. You don't need one. Huh? You don't need one. Yeah, yeah your skin looks good. Thanks, man. Why do you say that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we should, as men, we we should be more open and and uh, getting compliments by other men. It's, th- there's nothing that affects your masculinity in saying that another man looks good or uh, another guy is saying that you look good. Just say, I respect. Thank you. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. sometimes most of the time there's no back thoughts into it. It's like, yo, I mean, it doesn't happen ha- ha- happen often, but like most of the time, I feel like it's not like, oh, you just look good. There's just nothing. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not like uh, hitting on your whatsoever. Yeah. You just look at what. There's no problem with that. Bro, I had, I had this guy. He did the most before, like, and in, in a good way. Whatever. I guess he was like not shy, but he didn't want me to be defensive. So he came and he's like, like, oh, you're nice, blah blah blah. And then he he said, I, listen, I just meant to a man, but like, don't don't take it weird. Mm-hmm. But like, like, uh, I don't know how to say this, but like, bro, you just, you look good, bro. You're sharp, like. You're, you're a beautiful man like i have to tell you and whatever i was like thank you really appreciate it whatever but you see how he was like so so uncomfortable saying mm-hmm. this being scared of like me like what punching him or something mm-hmm. yeah i don't mind i think compliment for anyone like yeah. i think it's this if if anything if a guy goes out his way and be like you're a beautiful man bro this compliment is like say fucking less appreciate that that you went out your way to say that yeah. respectfully you yeah. look more comfortable with your masculinity being able to say that to another guy yeah. than not saying anything yeah say. i think just like the like the um, the dynamic has to change where we just make it known that you can't compliment another guy yeah on their skin or just how they look, yeah. period because 94 percent of men have never been complimented on their skin before Damn. which I'm 100% haven't been complimented by a guy ever about it before. Girls, sure. Men, amongst men, never. And I think... Have you ever got complimented by your skin? F- like I just said. Oh, what? From 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 women, yeah, but from men... Oh, you started talking about yourself, ne- sorry. Never. Okay. So... Well, you have nice skin. Thank you. But he does, though. I actually have never seen a pimple on your face. Truly. True. It's crazy we're talking about skin because I literally just came back to have um, skincare facial. You know, how was it? It was actually awesome. So check this out. Remember I told you when I was going down the rabbit oh. hole, the and, hole itself, and watching and watching the sad video stuff. Like I'm not, I'm not a sad individual. I'm not depressed. Yeah. But these kind of videos, bro. Whenever I see them, I'm just like, damn. How are you doing? She would walk in, I'd be like, hey, good to see you. And I'd go to my dressing room and just go, oh, I'll never, I'll never be able to be with her. True or false? Most men would rather get punched in the face than talk about their feelings. <laughs> yes, true. How many men do you think die by suicide each day in the UK? Have a guess. Raise your hand if you think it's under five. Under 10? It's 12. That's one man every two hours. While we're all enjoying our day, we're going to lose 12 men to suicide today. Don't you be smiling like that. You fuck everything up. If you smile like that too much, you don't want to stick around. You're so hard on yourself. I love that you have such high standards. But those aren't high standards. That's called perfection. And most people overestimate what they can do in a year. And they underestimate what they can do in two or three decades. And you haven't been around long enough to have those extra two or three decades. So don't fuck it up. There's time. I'm not a fighter, I'm a lover. Oh, I don't know. No, because if you're a lover, you gotta be a fighter. How so? If you don't fight for your love, what kind of love do you have? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> How are you doing? Mm. Who do you think you are? I am. Um, I fucking love this video. 
Tough, man. Bro, this 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 episode is too deep, Sergio. Good. No? Yeah, good. It's different. I know you're used to the laugh. Listen, men have feelings too. And Absolutely. we need to talk about it. Absolutely. It's tough, man. It's you know, there's Sometimes, like, it happened to me just the other day. I came across this video, and I'm like, bro, why am I caring so much about so many, like, irrelevant things? Like, I'm living life as if I'm living it for other people rather than just living it for myself and the people that are directly affiliated to my life. Damn. Like, I'm giving in too much into how I want people to perceive me, the, the image that I want people to have of me, what I think I want people to see me as rather than just being who I personally want to be. Yeah. If that makes sense. We literally just spoke about that. Yeah, we were talking about basically the fact that um, everything we're doing now, it's like sometimes we realize like whenever we go to the club, let's say, we're like, what am I doing here? I, I don't want to be mean, but I actually don't care about anyone. You know, what I'm saying that's in here. Like, I, mm -hmm. you guys are not gonna help me grow. You guys are not gonna help me make money. You guys are not gonna be make me, you know, do anything. So, like, what the fuck am I doing? Type of, like, you're stuck in a way, you know. And it's just like, what the fuck am I doing? That's well, it. really, really in a way that like, since like, since we care a lot about like our image, so you, you, I am a hundred percent agree with you because I'm the same of like, caring a lot about how people perceive me therefore mm. you go out and you're trying to please everyone you try yeah. to social media you want to please dream. everyone yeah so sell, sell, it's not even just like sell the dream it's not even selling it i'm actually just i'm i'm i'm, I'm acting like as i want everyone to like me and even you you're like that too like when someone doesn't like you you're like the fuck i'm like why <laughs> why like why don't you like me therefore i should be like oh well you don't like me that's okay i like i not everyone likes me yeah. more. You get what I mean? So, yeah, definitely sometimes, or most of the time, is actually fucking draining. I keep mm. talking about it, how much, like, it is draining to, like, want to please everyone, make everyone happy, while it should just be, like, us, like, the the, the people that are directly next to you, mm -hmm. like, family, f close friends, girlfriend, boyfriend type of thing. So, yeah. 100%. I think it might be also, like, just the ego. Like you know, when we don't want other people to don't not like us, let's say yeah. it's like, why would you not like me? As of like, I'll prove you that you should like me. Yeah, you know? and then you do something out of your way that takes your like energy off. Yeah, for for someone that you don't know, that's just someone's opinion. Yeah, like, what, what what do you care really about it? it? It's not that deep. You do you think whatever you want. I actually, I should not care as much as I actually do. You know, show that I do. That is very important, that you, the point that you, that you highlighted about ego. It's funny because, like, all of these things that I'm talking about now, it's all based off conversations with I had with my girls and just having, like, that deeper conversation with her just made me realize how much my ego has done more damage than good. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and the thing is, is that even with her, Um, like my ego has put a strain on my friendships, my, my family and my own relationship with my girl. Like I've allowed my ego to get into the way where I thought that I needed to be a particular person in order for my friends to like me, in order for my family to be proud of me, or in order for my girlfriend to want to stay with me. When in reality, the most of what those people just want is for me to be me. Yeah. And I assumed that they i assumed that they would want to see me in a different way rather than just love me for who i am therefore i created this fake mold mm. of myself in order to try and please them but they were already pleased mm. without me having to change anything about myself yeah. so i carried that throughout me to where like now like you know for the grand scheme of things i know who i am but i haven't really been the truest version of myself. Mm. And I'm at, I'm at like this crossword road now where 
that's kind of like the path that I want to pursue. And just I just hope like given how long I've been doing the opposite effect that it's not too late for me to be able to become that, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Yeah. Never too late. I don't think so. that will be it's never too late in my opinion. I've if like talking ego thing, I've changed a lot on my ego in the past like two years. And I had two like situations that happened to me that made me change that big bro honestly my ego was absolutely retarded you didn't know me you know me maybe for a year and obviously you didn't know me like that to know how much my ego was absolutely retarded before but it did only damage to my life to my friendships to my relationship only thing my first encounter of like me changing my ego was with one of our common friends which is peter and peter has an crazy ego also and we got like seven years of friendship we got like this little fight that became the most biggest fight ever. Mm-hmm. He had the same fight with Michu, a little fight, the biggest fight ever. All three of us, just ego related. I promise you, the subjects and like the first like arguments were the most like egotistical. No, no, but like nothing, like just pure nothing, like just like whatever, but became the most, the biggest thing. And we just stopped talking to each other as like, I took a step back and be like, I'm going to put down seven years of friendship, a good friend, for ego. Mm -hmm. Literally for ego. And him, he had the same, like the same thing. He was like, good, a good seven years of friendship, whatever, came back to me and be like, what the fuck are we doing? Mm -hmm. Since that, that was like, what, two years and a half ago, whatever, never had an ego fight ever again. Because obviously I took the time to like think about like what's why would I do things certain things related to ego of fighting. The second thing that did help me, and I don't know for you, but for me it did help me. It was the TV show. TV show like and obviously it's no crazy tea, but it is tea. TV show is very very hard mentally, in my opinion. I don't know for you, but I think it's, it it does something to your mental as you have to grow up. I, I can't really explain how you can only do a TV show for you to understand yeah. what a TV show does to you mentally of like the way they treat you. I'm not saying they treat you bad. They're just the way they treat you, the way you see things. It's not as you see on TV. Like even after rewatching the whole show, you're like, but that's, that's you know, it's, yeah. it wasn't really like that. You know, mm-hmm. It wasn't really like that. But, like, also mentally, like, speaking is very draining. It asks you a lot. Like, there's many things that ask you. So, so I came in the show, wanted, like, a new experience for sure. And the best thing that, like, when people ask me, like, which, what's the thing that you are the most happy? Obviously, the whole experience, meeting friends, whatever. But one thing that I put, like, before everything is what it did to my mental afterhand because mm-hmm. at first it was bad because it hits you so much like mentally that you're like eh, like it has to be a bad thing but it makes you overthink and overthink and overthink but in a good way of like work on yourself working on the things that you weren't capable of there's like some people uh some islanders that are like very 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 impatient i was like that most definitely but going there made me realize that i wasn't that impatient compared to other people but also made me work Mm. on my patience days after days after days and now (laughs) i'm literally someone that's patient i'm always like well things will happen or like i'll 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 wait for it like i'm not that crazy over it when it comes to like patience as before i'm still impatient don't get me wrong (laughs) but like not as before so whatever so Mm. these are all the type of things that help me through my ego i'll put it this way so yeah I think also realizing that your ego is uh, affects you that much and knowing that you have to change it makes you a strong person, you know? Mm-hmm. Like just the fact that you, you you know what's the problem in a way and you're willing to fix it shows how, how much also you've grown from, let's say, back then, how you were compared, yeah. to, compared to now, you know? But also to choose your fights, I'd say, like, because ego... Like ego, yes, the way we're talking, like it does bad, but ego could be a good thing in a way if you know how to... Like, manage it manage it use it i don't know how to say it but like if i'm i'm thinking like sports 
like sports, sometimes your ego does help you, and sometimes it does fuck be you better. up. So it's it's when you have a good coach, he'll say to you like, like use that ego in a good way, or like he's gonna channel it for you. Or like I know that one sport, boxing, is really a thing. While if you have like anger and ego, if you're able, if you have a good coach and you're able to channel it, it's so good. You'll be a better fighter than mm-hmm. someone that just has ego but doesn't mm-hmm. use his anger and his ego in his technique. Let's put it this way. Mm-hmm. So yeah. <clears throat> that was deep. It could be deeper. Would you not? You spend too much time with Carl. What is this? What did she say? No, I'm not saying it again. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm sure. I'm sure people were like, like listening like this, like just what the fuck. Ta- I thought taking like, everything, and I think people would. I think people are gonna appreciate this this side of the of the episode. I think a lot of people need to to hear a lot of things that we said. I think a lot of people don't always take into account what we say, or maybe they have moments in which they do. Hopefully, this is a piece of content that they'll be able to digest in order to keep working on themselves, keep working on their egos, and hopefully uh, reconciliating or holding on to nice, beautiful, meaningful relationships. So on that note, I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Don't forget to give us five stars on Amazon, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and check us out on Patreon. Patreon. Look at us. Look how mellow we are. Look at us. We're all we're all in our feels. Oh. Wow. But um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. It's been your boy, Sergio's Talks. It's your boy, Matt. It's your boy, Carl. And uh, we'll see you guys next week with a much, 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 much more high-spirited video. Take care. <laughs>